What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Off the Couch Boxing. I'm your host, Reckless Rex Ruger, along with Alexis Arguello, the puppet. And I'm your other host, Frank Benji's back with another one. And I got to ask myself, Alexis, why do we have you? But you are a legend. I just wish you would offer up more. Our guest is here. That's where it's at, folks, right there. Punctuality. Hopefully people can hear me out there. Or in my case, maybe not hearing me. What's up, man? What's up, man? We got him, Tremaine Williams. Hey, Tremaine, I, I was just watching uh, uh, a, uh, uh, a a documentary piece on you recently, and, and I want to ask right off the rip, I found this very interesting, where you said when you got into boxing, you weren't really a confrontational person. You know, when you train yourself to be confrontational, this from the mental aspect of boxing, you know, is that a completely different way of training? You know, because most of us have the fight or flight. We either want to stand there in the face of battle or we want to run. Yeah. You know? How did you overcome that part of your game? Um, I think I developed that. I think it just came with um, me being, to be honest, I just think it was just an innate ability that came with who I was. I yeah. think I was just, it was something I was born with. I was naturally not confrontational, but that's what I thought. Because that's why I, I'd rather go that way than go that way. So I'd right, rather, right, I'd rather right. fight than fight. But then I started fighting. I'm like, I'm actually, this is actually who I am. Yeah. It just sounds fun when you hear like a boxer and then you hear non-confrontational because I think that, you know, the stereotype is probably that all boxers are ready to throw down all the time, you know? Yeah, but a lot, but a lot of boxing don't got nothing to do with confrontation. Right, right. It always makes me think like, you know how sometimes they say like a shark got a taste for blood and then he want to do it again, you know what yeah. I mean? Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. And what's the nickname, man? the mighty midget, man? I'm a guy that's six foot four, man. So, I mean, I, you know, I've been blessed with height, and that's my son. He's also a, a six foot four. Yeah. So, you know, uh, it, 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 if you're short, man, like that, you know, how do you make that an advantage, though? Because you've obviously still done extremely well. All right. So, um, in boxing, you know, they say uh, you don't want to stand up too high and punch. Right. So, you got to be crouched. So, I use that as my, use it to my advantage. Yeah, yeah, diminutive. Yeah. So that's a good idea. So in and out, I'm quicker. And and a lot of guys that's tall say, I only like fighting short dudes. Yeah. Me, personally, I only know about fighting tall guys. Yeah. I, I feel like I think so far, I feel like it could be like a walk and puncher bag, though. There's a lot of surface area to yeah, hit. Exactly, exactly. Oh. And then boxing a lot, it got a lot to do with timing. Not so much reach, not so much speed or power, but right. timing. Do you find do you find it, you, Go ahead. You, in short, it's easier to get inside and work the body? Yeah, definitely. But but the thing about working a body, when you get inside, you got to get outside too. Right. Yeah. Naturally, uh, inside fighter. So yeah, yes. it's easy to get inside. But my the way I box is like I'm, I'm more like I I I I'm in and out. So yeah, right. it's easier to get the body shot. But that's for a fighter that comes forward and pressure. Right. So, so I gotta ask though, your last fight was in 2023, but since 2020, only three total fights though. So like, what's the inactivity been based on? Um. So. When the pandemic hit, Rock Nation, they canceled their uh, promotional program, okay. whatever, the promotional side. So then I signed a different deal with uh, Dino Duva. When I signed with Dino Duva, uh, the pandemic was still going on, and I fought Leo. When I fought Leo that one time after I lost, um, I took about six months off, and then I got back in the gym. But the thing about the pandemic, the only people that really were fighting were Top Rank, PBC, Matchroom, yeah. Golden Boy. So if you didn't have a contract going into the pandemic, it was kind of right. hard getting a fight because nobody yeah. owe you a favor. Right. As long as they owe you a favor, you got to fight. You get what I'm saying? The yeah. stand yeah. in the world. Yep. Yeah. So that's how I went the last few years. Yeah. So how did the guy like you get into boxing, man? Like, were you getting in a lot of fights as a kid? Um, actually, it's crazy because um, I transferred school when I first started boxing. I I, I had my first fight, and then I transferred schools. When I transferred schools, I was the first kid. Everybody used to pick on me. And I used to get in a fight every day. And then the newspaper came out when I was number four in the country. The newspaper came out. Everybody was like, oh, you only fight because you box. It's like, nah, y'all was picking on me. Yeah. So I fought. That's right, because I feel like with you being non-confrontational, you know, I answered my own question earlier. Obviously, you wouldn't be the one looking for fights. Nah, but I, I nah, you coming nah. across as non-confrontational, maybe people are looking to fight with you. Yeah, definitely. And I'm the shortest. I've been short my whole life. I've been dealing with this my whole life. Okay. And I, I boxed before Google, so it's I, I, I boxed when it was a time where you say I'm a national champion. They go get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> now it's you now it's Google. I can say my name's Tremaine Williams, and they Google you and go, oh shit! You could instantly see them start to treat you different. Right. Yeah. That's true. That's true. 
Now, how close, or maybe you can do this. How close uh, can you get to dunking a basketball, or can you dunk a basketball? I actually used to play um, basketball. Okay. Um, I used to contest the rim. Okay. Because so your you body just adapts to what you do. So my body started adapting to what I do. I got decent sized calves. I mean, I, I got a nice little body. So I yeah. was able to test the rim. Would I have been able to dunk? I don't, probably not. And, and people forget, though, man, you've got a whole actual inch on uh, the great Muggsy Bogues, only five foot three. Yeah, that's a fact. Hey, yeah. White man can jump for real because he was talking about being 6'4. He ain't dunked a basketball in his life. Oh, man. man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I was 6'4, six, six I'd be yoking it. Yeah, I'm Woody Harrelson, man. Yeah, I am for sure, man. Yeah, I got no hops. I, in turn, have dunked a basketball. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now, and now, now, when you're growing up and getting into boxing, man, uh, you, you got any guys you're looking up to, man, like those guys that we idolize as kids? Yeah, uh, of course, Pernet Whitaker. Yeah, sweet P. Rest in peace. I don't think I've ever heard. Yeah. It might be yeah. the first time somebody said that. First? Yeah. I think a lot of Muhammad Ali on here. I now, the first the first boxer I ever watched was Muhammad Ali. Yeah, actually, Muhammad Ali wrote me a letter too when I was a kid. But oh, my, yeah, it's crazy. That's yeah, that's yeah. crazy. So that's the, 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 the person I idolized first was Muhammad Ali. I watched everything about him. I that it's now you could tell me about Ali that I don't know. And it's the not first, that Whitaker is a bad answer. That's a great answer. No, no. Yeah. So this guy, uh, Damon Allen. Uh, wasn't it, his name Damon? Yeah, Damon Allen. He gave me two. This was in the VCRs. We have uh, cassette tapes. Oh man, taking it back. Yeah, he, he gave me. Um, he gave me ten fights of Fernando Vargas. That was the first fight I ever watched, and then he yeah. gave me ten fights of Fernando Whitaker. So I watched Fernando Vargas for the first time, and yeah. I watched all the ten fights. Then I went to the gym a couple times. I started trying new stuff. But I always boxed like this. I went and watched Pernell Whitaker. I went back to the gym. I remember like yesterday. I told my coach, I was like, Brian, how come he boxed like me? Yeah, Brian, like you box right here. <laughs> and now, and, 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 and now, going forward, how active would you like to be? Like, what's your plan for the rest of like twenty twenty four? All right, so um, as of right now, uh, we we in talks with overtime right now. Uh, we trying to get a rematch with Pierce, um, because he came to my hometown, upset me. Um, I wasn't in the best shape, like I wasn't for Leo. Uh, but no excuses. Um, so we trying to get that back in his hometown in Atlanta. Uh the middle of the year so right now i'm getting ready to do something in april i got a call from the new york uh tcl you ever heard of total Co team cap i can't believe okay yeah so they, want, they want me to fight in there but i don't know if i want to do it or not i'm 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 up in the air but one thing it can do is like get me back in shape it get me refocused again so yeah i'm now thinking the weight of the rec has you at a super bantam though like do you still plan on if i have you know has the weight division uh changed or no, you I, still, anywhere I, else? I still can fight 122 i just gotta do it the right way Okay. Who's the big fight around 122? Who's a huge fight at 122? The only Dude. fight right now, uh, the person that got all the belts is in a way. Um, yeah. Obviously, once I get back, once I get a, another fight, I got to get back in the win column. Once I get back in the win column, I'll be back top 20. Um, I'm, I'm looking, I'll take on Casamayoro. Well, it might be tough to get Inoue because we just had Duke Mike on here, and he came out of nowhere and started calling out Inoue and talking wild. Yeah, but you got to – That episode seemed to come, by the way. What's his, what's his name again? Duke Mike. Duke Mike. What, what's his record? I think he's 24. I think he's 24 and one, 19 knockouts. But, I, you know, I found him on Facebook, and I knew I remembered the name, but I also knew he hadn't fought in quite a while. But then he's on there making claims, and, and he did fight at the lower weight classes, man, and uh, he dropped the new he's name quite a bit. I don't want to tease it too much, but we do have the episode. We haven't released it yet, but. So, so, so um, who was he signed with? I didn't know that he was. I, I don't know. Because he, he, he had like, a long way off. Yeah, but just the team, the whole team was crazy though, because he had the manager there and he was on there like yelling. You know, yeah, but you can't really. He got very overt African accents, and the whole scene yeah, was just wild. You tell him I'll fight him if he need to fight. Yeah, that's, good. that's, but, what I, that's exactly what I meant. Yeah, I mean, you know, he, he's looking to. Uh, yeah, he's looking to actually, uh, uh, you, you know, break back in. And, and I think his last fight was somewhere like 20, 2020, 2021 himself. So. Yeah. It's been a while. You know, so to come back and drop a Nui's name with no tune-up fights is yeah, 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 that's crazy. They said, you know? they said a Nui was going to sleep for three days. Yeah, they said it. Pretty much, they, 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 they do it too much. That's that's how you took you out of a fight. Yeah, that is it. Yeah. Now, now the other night we saw yet another uh, Jake Paul fight. You know, what are you saying on him? You know, in these type of gimmick fights, he's got. He's obviously going to do one now with Mike Tyson. Oh, we also just saw Ngannou and Joshua the other day. 
Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, um, with Jake Paul, he is a real boxer. Yeah. By, by, he's by 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 a long shot. He's a he's a boxer. He does training camps. He has real sparring partners. He has real trainers. Um, yeah, he's the, he's guy doing. He fought, the guy he fought last time was uh, a, a a bum. So that's not even nothing. You get what I'm saying? Oh, uh, what was it, Borland? Yeah, yeah, something like that. That that yeah. was almost as, it looked like that was the setup the Mike Tyson fight, yeah. or maybe the numbers didn't do so good. He had to do the Tyson fight. Yeah, but, but you. Th- 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 I think we're going to put right here. Dude. He's Mike Tyson in 1986, man. He's dead. Oh. Uh, Jake Paul. If oh, yeah, he's yeah, yeah, Mike of, the, of the mid to late 80s, man. Uh, this ends in first degree murder. Yeah, that's a fact. That's yeah, a fact. But do, you think, do you think fighting Mike Tyson is a step backwards for Jake Paul as a boxer? No, because I Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson still is physically a specimen. Like, yeah. You ever been next to him? He, he really is a big guy. Like, still. Yeah, and, and like he's intimidated, like he understands the fact that the element of intimidation. Yeah, the so, last yeah, yeah, definitely. So, I mean, I think it's a, I think it's for the money. That's what I think it is. Yeah, typically, it's just a typical money fight. I just wonder, I just wonder because you said he, he, like, you feel like he's a real boxer, and I, to some degree, I agree with you, but it, it kind of like. I feel like these last two fights, that August guy, he got the knockout, and that Borland guy, he got the knockout. And those were like two guys that had been boxing. Well, well, in like, boxing, we call those confidence a, boosters. Oh, man, now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are confidence boosters, he said. Yeah, they, we, call those, we call those confidence boosters. Yeah. So so if you ever seen a pro uh, lose a fight, like, I'm not saying he's not a pro, but, like, if you ever seen a guy take a loss that he shouldn't have took, they put him versus someone else, get his confidence back up, then he'll right. fight somebody and get back on track. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's an Andre August. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's what that was. Whoever he fought the other night. Now, what about when you, um, uh, uh, like, have you thought about, like, you know, and I, I don't want to put the car before the horse, but have you thought, if boxing will always be a part of your life, like, have you thought about, like, life after boxing? Yeah, I've already started dibbling in, like, I got a few um businesses that I do. Yeah. Then I already start dibbling in, like, helping people get managed, um, helping put together fights around my town, stuff like that. So I'm always be connected to boxing. This is who I am. So regardless of it's um, managing, promoting. Well, I can't be a promoter. I got felonies. But manager, helping with promotion, helping yeah. being a, a, um, an advisor. I'm always be around. I'm be, uh, coaching might come later on in my life. I was gonna just ask that. You ever feel like being directly in the corner? I'm be, I'm real meticulous, and it takes a long time to, to to start a fire from scratch, and and then to hone his skills, and then stay there. It takes yeah. a lot. Yeah. And then, you know, yeah. The, then you know the um the fighter and the, and the coach get the shit in the stick. Yeah, that's true. The manager and the promoter they they live lovely. Yeah, they, that's facts. Yeah, that's for, that's so for sure. I want to I come from this side and then go to that side and like, I should just get cheated like shit. Yeah. Is that- all these guys right now, man, are all making their claim to want to be the face of boxing. Is there a guy out there like right now that you consider is really the like the face of current boxing right now? Yeah, nobody can't touch the tank right now. Yeah. The number the numbers online. So yeah, and that's my and that's my uh, that's my boy. So. You think, you think you don't think you don't think Canelo still stakes a claim as possibly being the face of boxing? A Mexican will always be at the the, the helm of boxing because they're fan base. Yeah, they're, 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 but do you think it hurts his legacy a little bit if he walks away from the sport and doesn't fight Benavidez? Um, no, no, no. Yeah, he's made a lot of money. He's been successful. Yeah, I mean, he made, he made a lot of money right money. now from fans, you know, for quote unquote ducking. But he made he made a lot of money. Why take seventy million when I can make take fifty million and then fifty million for two fights rather than taking a loss, right? And maybe take another thirty million and it's just, it, it still goes up to hundred million. Yeah, just take yeah. easy fights for hundred million and walk off and retire from boxing. Don't let boxing retire you. Yeah. So, Something else too. We were talking about Anui before. He was obviously the fighter of the year, but uh, there was a big claim that Bud Crawford made that he thought he should have been the fighter of the year. Yeah, he should have. He should have been. Yeah, we agree too. Um, yeah. Because I mean, he beat Fulton, and then he beat Tapas, but I don't know. That's 
Uh -huh. He didn't. Yeah, he's making the bud's point was more like you know how I, you know the, the, the magnitude of the play with Errol and how easily he made it look uh, you know uh, 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 how dominated. Yeah, but that was like two or three performances rolled into one right there. That you know that was better than what a lot of guys did over like three or four fights that year. That's a, <laughs> it, it was amazing, and he made it just look extremely easy. Definitely. Now do you think we'll see him and Canelo in the ring at all? Yeah, I could see that happening because yeah. he fight um. Overseas for, uh, at 160. He's gonna go try. He's gonna go do a fight at 160. The same possible against Chris Eubank. He gonna see how it feels at 60, yeah. and yeah. then we gonna see. Then we see how he looks at 60. If he look amazing at 60, he can do it at 68. Yeah, yeah. So do we have a target date at all for you for uh, for your next fight, or when you'd like to be fighting again? I would like to fight in April, but I'm gonna see what the, I'm, I'm gonna give TCL a call back. And let him know if I want to do it. So I still got a couple of days to say yeah or nay. Um, so if that doesn't work out, if April doesn't work out, then I'll do a TCL for about two weeks, get back in shape, and then I'll be looking for late April, early May. Now, what are your feelings, man? Just objectively, like your opinion, like when you see, because we opened up the interview talking about, like you know, the whole fighter flight, you know, getting yourself conditioned to, you know exist in a confrontational world when you're not confrontational uh, but by nature when you see ryan garcia go on and make these crazy wild statements and his own mental health gets called into question you know you know how do you think it's playing out this is just of course one man's opinion uh you know, is he trying to get out of the fight is he trying the crazy man approach is he trying to look like he's fucking falling apart like what's still really going on in your opinion well uh, when he was undefeated about i'll say three years ago remember he took a break and said he's working on his mental health Correct. Yeah. So that was the first sign. Now it's showing up again because I was talking to a little a young fighter in the gym today. I had a, just came from the gym. He was like, "I think he's trolling. I think he's trolling." He, he was laughing. I said, "Ah, uh, yeah, trolling is um saying f you. Trolling is this. Trolling is that. Trolling is not saying I got molested that too." Right. Right. That's, that's mental health. It's strange yeah. stuff about alien stuff about all this non sequitur stuff that just doesn't make a lot he, of sense. He, he, he's recording a video saying they took my phones. I can't get in my account. But yeah. you're making a video. Yeah. Now that, that that could be that could be trolling right there. That's yeah. not that's not like that's Yeah, that yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, it sounds like they got people on standby ready to step in though as, as possible opponent. I don't know if Barboza's on standby. Like uh, people, you know, they would do they 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 probably put Barboza before they put um Broner, but I think Broner would have more than Barboza. Yeah, Broder's trying to work himself in there too. Yeah, but it, it, it is sell tickets. It was a big heated discussion between Bill Haney and uh, Broder and Broder. Yeah, on a, on a, that that uh, that do at the Barclays. It'd go crazy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that would do well. That would do really well. Yeah, that'd go crazy. That well. And chalk one up for New York, man. I mean, we're upstate New Yorkers, man. We'd love to see good fights coming. Yeah, definitely, the definitely. I'm, you know, I'm right here in Connecticut. Yeah, yeah. I mean, chalk it up for the Northeast doesn't make them, you know, it don't make them any tougher than the Northeast, man. Yeah, that's a fact. That is a fact, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, facts are facts, Tremaine, right? Yeah, definitely. They are. Hey, Adrian, listen, man. Adrian Broner still has the funniest post fight uh, interview of all time. And he said, Look that boy. <laughs> he said, The hood, no. <laughs> yeah. The hood knew he won at least, man. <laughs> but, that is but, you know, the scores, though, who knows, man? You know, I mean, with scores we see turned in nowadays, you never fucking know. Yeah, that's a fact. Well, yeah. listen, man, I'm glad we got a chance to do this, Tremaine. I really appreciate it, man. You definitely stay in touch. We'll definitely we'll do it again, man, for sure. Yeah, send me your number um, in my inbox. I will. I will. I'll send you my number. We'll definitely stay in touch, man. And, yeah, I mean, you got something to promote or a fight coming up. We'd love to have you back on for sure, man. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, appreciate it, brother. Thank you, man. Enjoy the rest of your day, bro. You too. Hey, All right. Take All it right, easy. There he goes, folks. Tremaine Williams. And I like the way he uses the mighty midget, man. You know what? I'm a short guy, but I'm gonna hide my deficiency in plain sight. I'm gonna thread it right. I'm gonna thread it right into my nickname. Yeah, it's kind of like the off the couch boxing podcast. Yeah. Rolls off the tongue. Hide yeah. my deficiencies in plain sight. Yeah. Right. Super bantamweight, uh, you know, 20 and 2. Hopefully we see him fight again soon. I mean, uh, his last fight was in 2023, but then he was a little bit inactive. But you hear he's working through, getting himself back into shape, man. And, you know, like when he's on his game, dude, man. Nice. Real nice. Yeah. And, again, a Northeasterner. So, you know, our point is proven once again. There's nothing that can be said against the toughness of the Northeasterns, just like the Irish, much like the Irish. 
yeah. So uh, that was a fun time, man, having him on, man. And uh, I don't know. I guess I'd rather be 6'4 than 5'4, but I feel like 5'4 certainly could have its advantages in the world. At certain times, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've always been a tall guy, man, so I feel like I've never known, like, oh, uh, known otherwise, man. But, I mean. Uh, I'm the kind of guy that's useful if, if an old lady's in the grocery store and she can't reach something on the top shelf. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You know, but then, I mean, being short's got its advantages, too, man. Like, my wife is five foot one. And, I mean, me and her would fit together a lot, lot more nicely in a loving embrace if I were <laughs> if I were five foot four. <laughs> And other things, et cetera, et cetera. You know, I mean, it's it's mm -hmm. make for comfort right there, man. You know, we we interweave better, man. Yep. That that being said, big shout out to Tremaine Williams. I don't know where the fuck that conversation was just going that we were just having. I have but, no idea. Uh, that's super weird. Uh, <laughs> the, the mighty midget man. Just, I, I love him, man. He's another one of those guys. You could sit there and chop it up with him, man, for probably hours, you know? Yep. Fun, fun hangs, man. Just a good dude, man. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely uh, have him back. Arguello, on. Alexis Arguello just sat back there with like a mouthful of teeth. Yeah, he usually does. <laughs> hey, man, with the wars he was in, he's lucky to just have any left. I mean, <laughs> I mean, he is wearing a mouthpiece. Granted, man, but he took some hellacious shots. Aaron the Hawk Pryor. Don't want to bring his name up, but hey, yeah, calm down back there. <laughs> also got a picture of Papa lurking back there. Yep. Always with us, man. The important people are always with us. You know, if you can't have your own, uh, uh, you know, your own father who passed away, a picture of him, and a puppet of Alexis Arguello, a fighter that you admire on a personal and professional level. I mean, come on. What kind of a set do you have? Yep. You know? Well, anyway, make sure you like and follow us on Facebook. We are just babbling and babbling and babbling the fuck on here, man. And uh, I don't know where it's going. It isn't going anywhere, so I've made a ruling. Enough. Yeah. Like and follow us on Facebook, and make sure you like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you're watching this with your two peepers right now. You're here. Hit Destination the arrived. Hit the bell. Yeah, hit the bell, man. And uh, you go ahead. You can quote us with the great uh, saying I, of uh, – Got to quote the great Gerald Busey. Yeah. The, uh, with the um, – I can go 15 seconds with anything. And make sure that if you want to be a champ, remember to keep rolling with the champs. <laughs>